Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and today we're on to pseudoscientists number four of the 13 pseudoscientists of Christmas. Now, you may be a little bit confused wondering why I said 13 there instead of 12, like I initially said, and that's because today we are actually covering two people. Now, some people will say, well, wait, but they're the same person, so technically it's still 12 pseudoscientists, and I don't know if they're the same person. I'm just giving them both slot number four. Anyway, today we are looking at peat and repeat because it turns out, and I'm sorry I didn't get around to this earlier, but they actually responded to me and Dave McKeegan. Now, they actually made two videos on myself and Dave McKeegan. The first video was responding to the video on Dave McKeegan's channel, and the second video was responding to the video on my channel. Anyway, today we'll go into their response to Professor Dave McKeegan. I would first like to take a second, though, to kill Planner Walk for introducing me to this channel channel. Not because of anything specific that they talk about, simply because the music that they use for their intro is the same music that I use in my videos, and this is their intro. Okay, I do actually want to offer a compliment here. Let's ignore the fact that Dave probably still wants to kill me. That was a really good way that they segued into their intro. Part of our part of our channel now is to <clears throat> look at de delusional thought. thought absolutely, explore yeah. delusional thought. Now we we think it's delusional for people to think that uh, what underpins white light is RGB, mm -hmm. red, green, and blue. Yeah, because we think it's the other way around. We think it's the other way around. We think it's white light that underpins RGB. RGB. Yeah. So that's the basis of their claim. And it is kind of weird that they would call someone delusional for thinking that white light is made up of red, green, and blue light. Especially seeing as if you've done any work in colours with photography or even on the computer, then you will know that you can get any visible colour simply by having different amounts of red, green, and blue. White light is just simply what you get when you put all of them up really high. A lot of the screen area is white, and it's white simply because, in our understanding, it's the intensity of the white light, white LEDs, because this is a depending, weird... Depending on how the monitor's been made, right. it's the intensity of light that's being displayed, so it's washing out the colour, the red, blue and green. So this is a point that was addressed by Dave McKeegan in his video. And the point that he made is you can have a white that is less intense than, let's say, a red, for example. To demonstrate this, I have a frame from earlier on in the video. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a white colour from over here on Shork. We can open it up and we can see that most of the values are roughly the same. The red is a little bit higher, but I think that's due to how I've set the white balance on my camera. Now, what I can do is I can add more of a specific color to this. So if I add more green, we've got something that looks more like a yellow. I can add more of the red, and then we've got something that looks even more like a yellow. And what I've done here is I've made it brighter, yet it looks closer to yellow than it does to white now. Now, admittedly, what we did there did make the original color that we selected seem more like a gray color. But this is just a consequence of how our eyes perceive color. When we have something to compare it to, our eyes go, well, sure it's white, but it's not the brightest thing that we're seeing, so we're just gonna say that it's gray now. It's the same color, right here it looks white, but if we put it in the color picker and we pick a brighter color, then it looks a lot duller, it looks like a gray. It didn't magically change color, we just had something different to compare it to. I'm sure a lot of people can understand our point, um, apart from Dave McKeegan. And his and, and his, his cohort cohort yes um, sure and plain old plain old didgeridoo yeah wait did they just call me plain old didgeridoo that's it I'm never gonna recover from that I'm never recovering this is where I think Peter and Pete are getting confused about how light works no. We're not getting confused at all. Let's go firstly and look at the physics girl. On your retina, you have light sensitive cells called cones that perceive color. Red light, green light, and blue light cones. Some people have an extra cone, which would allow them to see many more colors than the rest of us. Apparently RGB can make up all the colors. And yet for some reason, she's saying that you've got an extra, some people have an extra cone and they can see more colors. Oh. How can you see more colours if you've got an extra cone? 
Yeah. It, do, it certainly doesn't make sense. I, I think yeah. even physics girl just doesn't know what she's talking about there, you know. Okay, so Dave McKigan said that they're confused about how light works. And then they went on to demonstrate that they're confused about how light works. <laughs> Congratulations, boys. So the whole thing about the extra cone, which some people do have, is it allows you to perceive another wavelength of light separate to red, green, and blue. Normally, if someone like myself use something that is yellow, then that will activate the red cones and the green cones that I have in my eyes. Now, this means that if the green cones and the red cones are activated by something that is green and red, then I'm still going to perceive that as yellow. However, if someone has cones for yellow light in their eyes, then if they see something that is just green and red, they're not going to perceive that as yellow. Instead, they're just going to perceive that as a cheap knockoff of yellow and wonder why yellow doesn't look quite right when viewed on a TV screen. Or at least, I'd assume that's how they experience it. I've never actually met one of these people. She's spinning the top, and the top's been painted with red and green segments on it. And it's merging, the red and green, the colours are merging. To, give to you, form uh, yellow. And she's saying that that's a trick. We need a source of white light. So if you're doing this in outdoors, in, in Darkness. sunlight, <laughs> on, in sun, if you're doing it in sunlight, then the red that you've painted on your disc is going to be lighter because of the sunlight. The green on your disc is also going to be lighter because of the uh. sunlight. And when you spin it, you're going to produce a colour that's even lighter. Well, I would say that they're actually wrong there, because to me, those two colours on that wheel actually look like they're different brightnesses. However, when it's spinning, it actually looks dimmer than the brighter colour on there, but it looks brighter than the dimmer colour on there. If you wanted the colour that it's showing to be brighter than any of the colours on there, then you would need it to reflect more light. However, spinning doesn't make it reflect more light ask the physics girl to do this in a dark room what color has she got black <laughs> she hasn't got any color there's no color there's no what, color what underpins all colors is white light the argument there is saying you need light to see anything so therefore white light underpins everything no that's not how it works just because you need light to see stuff doesn't mean that that light has to be white light. People can see white light. Yeah. If you heat up a, a metal to a very high temperature, it will turn white. If you look at the sun very quickly, it will look white. Okay, I do need to point out, never look directly at the sun. That is bad for you. It is not good. Do not do it. And yet they're telling you in the electromagnetic spectrum that the lot, there's no white light not at all. At all. Yeah. There's none whatsoever. That is because what you see as white light is a combination of colours creating white. In fact, not all white light is the same, but we're going to get back to that. But I, I like it how he puts the uh, the, the colour spectrum in the graph. Oh, right, yeah. You know, yeah. You know just, to, just to convince people that you can get all of the colours um, using the spectrum. But there's no white in the spectrum. Yeah, I know, yeah. There's no white, white in the spectrum. spectrum at all. How can you see white? white? Yeah. Because white is a combination of colours. That's how you see white. It shouldn't be that difficult to figure it out. Like, your whole claim is that white light is not made up of red, green, and blue. It shouldn't be too hard to put the two together to figure this out. You know, when the spectrum doesn't do white. Yeah, because you're meant to create white using blue, green, and red. So where's the white in this? <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. If you have one plus one, where does the two come from? Because you're supposed to create two with one and one. You can't! They're not explaining how do you get two from one and one! Oh my god, I've debunked maths. That is essentially how their argument sounds right now, although. I may have accidentally put them through to the conspiracy that 1 plus 1 does not equal 2. Oh dear. Now, you will note that within the visible light spectrum, there is no white light. There are only colours ranging from violet to red, with every variation in between. Sunlight, for example, is a wide range of electromagnetic radiation, which contains not only all wavelengths of visible light, but also the ranges beyond it, like ultraviolet and infrared. 
This will cause equal responses from our S, M, and L band receptors. See, Dave McGeehan explained it. Had you waited a bit, you wouldn't have needed to ask that silly question. So, so you've got rainbows. So he brings in the concepts, of the, the idea of rainbows, and you've got this raindrop here. Okay, let's just... Um... So is he saying that the eye reforms the all those colours oh, so to create white. If, if this if this understanding is correct, how is it possible you can see a you can see the distinct bands in a rainbow? Because what happens with a rainbow is it separates the light enough that your eyes will recognise it as distinctly different colours. However, if it isn't separated, then that doesn't happen, and your brain will just register it as white. That is why you can see white on a monitor, even though the pixels in that monitor will have individual red, green, and blue sections. They aren't far enough apart to be able to be recognised as separate colours. Yeah, all you'd see is it'd be a whole a uh, mismatch of different colours. Yeah. That's what a rainbow would look like, according to David. Well, no, because light through raindrops is refracted in a very particular way. And also, the light that you see from each raindrop isn't actually going to be the whole spectrum. It's just going to be one colour. Both of these factors combined result in rainbows having some form of coherence, even though it's a whole lot of individual tiny water droplets that are forming them. Do we actually have to say that these bananas, these bananas are made up of red and green, and the red and green are all moving over the surface of the banana? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, so they've got a bit of a misconception there about how we perceive... No, no, physics girl, we just heard from physics girl that you can't see yellow. And she, she, she constructed yellow by turning a disc, spinning a disc... With the, red and green. With red and green on it. The banana's not in motion, so how can we perceive that yellow? yellow. Yeah. The reason for this is because there's different ways to create the same colours. For yellow, you can either create a yellow wavelength or you can mix red and green. And as luck would have it, there are different ways to create different colours as well. You can have it so that colours are so close together that they appear as though they are just one colour. Or you could have two colours moving so fast that they blur into one another. And in actual fact, with the physics girl demonstration that you pulled up, what you are seeing are colours so close together that they appear as though they're the same colour. This is because the pixels in your monitor aren't actually in motion, they're just creating the illusion of motion. Now the camera itself, that was what was seeing the colours move so fast that they blur into one another. Am I being a bit nitpicky here? Sure, but I think it can be useful to explain what's going on. Any image that we see is from the light that our eyes have received over a period of time. Now if that image changes over the period of time, what your eyes are going to be seeing is all the light that went into your eyes during that period of time. So if it starts out as green going into your eyes and hitting a spot on the retina, and then red going into your eyes and hitting the same spot on the retina, your brain will perceive that to be yellow. Now another way for two different colours, let's say red and green, to hit the same spot on the retina, is for the source of those colours to be really close together. Oh yeah, I already explained the latter part of that, except in a little bit more detail. Well, one thing I would like to say straight away, and that is, um, you know, nature works instantaneously. So there's, you know, when, when he's talking about a time delay between the red and the green, you know, entering our eyes, you know, I mean, is there a time delay? When you see the banana, you just see, it, you, <laughs> well, well, yeah, you just see the banana as it is. Well, no, nature hardly ever works instantaneously. There are time delays everywhere. In the case of our eyes, well, our brains can't process images instantaneously as soon as we receive them. And even if we could, then the images that it would see would be so dark and grainy that it would be impossible to make heads or tails of anything. So instead, our eyes work in such a way that allow us to get a clearer picture and allows our brain to have time to process things. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about this in the context of mixing colours, not so much in the case of a banana being yellow, because bananas actually do reflect yellow light. Anyway, back to you Dave. Thank you for letting me... So now he's saying that bananas reflect yellow light, but we've yeah. got no cones to, to, to detect, to detect the, the yellow light. As Dave explained in his video, you can see yellow light because yellow light is picked up by both your red cone and your green cone. It may not activate them to the same intensity that red and red does, but it still activates them. These questions were absolutely answered in the video. Absolutely. Yeah, this is what I can't understand, you know. Yeah. Yeah. We do know. We do. He's got an Area 51 warning, restricted access. Fucking, oh, what's he uh, got it there thing? for, anyway? Yeah. On his keyboard. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's going to play. He's going to make a tune to Aliens, isn't he? Oh, don't worry, Peter and Peter. I've got something in the works. It's just not ready yet. Well, you might actually think <laughs> aliens are real. I mean, you two exist, and I can't exactly rule out that you might be aliens that have just been left here. Because the RGB uh -huh. won't be able to pick up the yellow. It can only pick up red, green, and blue. Absolutely, yeah. You know, and you know, I'm waiting for you know. I don't understand this at all. Look, 
We already know that. You don't need to keep on telling us. This is not new information. In fact, a surprising amount of their video is just repeating the same stuff over and over again. There is a reason why they're called peat and repeat. So, so, so there's what, more to come. So what they're doing, they still haven't <coughs> proved, disproved us. They've, they've not actually falsified our opinion that RGB um, does not make up white, white light. light. Yeah. Okay, so I've been at this video for a while, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap it up here. However, let's address that. Because you see, Peter and Pete's understanding of light is that white light is responsible for all light. However, what they don't seem to realise is that not all white light is the same. Because you see, white light can vary in the colours that it contains between red, green and blue. But more than that, we can actually figure out what colours any given white light contains. You see, this here is a spectroscope and it works in a similar way to how a rainbow works. It uses prisms to refract light and to separate it meaning that you can figure out what colours are in any light. Now when I got this I had a third monitor and the third monitor demonstrates the point absolutely perfectly. Unfortunately that monitor no longer works and it wouldn't even work on my current PC that I have. But fortunately I did take photos at the time of all of my monitors showing white light through this. So let's take a look. So this comes from my main monitor. As we can see there is a band of blue, a band of green and a band of red and there are dark spaces in between each of those. This is exactly what we'd expect to see if monitors create white light using red, green and blue. This one is from the monitor that I watched Josh Strife Haze on and as we can see we get the same kind of thing although this is a bit dimmer. And this one came from the monitor that no longer works. As you can see the red, green and blue there are clearly very separate. Interestingly though there is a fourth line there. Apparently some monitors are really bad at producing yellow so they add a fourth band in. Anyway to get each of those images the monitors were producing white yet there were very different colour profiles there. And keep in mind I didn't do anything fancy here. You can get a spectroscope for yourself for relatively cheap. So Peter and Pete if they wanted to could look at different types of white light separated through something like this. They would be able to see for themselves that not all white light is the same. Anyway leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know who you think is going to be in the top three pseudoscientists. We're almost there. As always a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. Huge Rs, MC Nutkin, Mori, Vermont1777, Tony C, Rosanna Keller, Wolfie, Kid Vicious, Sarch Campbell, Definitely not NASA. Craig D'Amelio, Richard M. Chapman, Kaylee, and Fist Wizard. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon. There should be a link there. Or you could buy me a coffee. I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.